Who are those that will benefit from the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? And is it just anyone and everyone who just believes in Christ, accepts Him as their Lord and Savior, and believe in the value of His shed blood? Let's go to you, Brother Donald. Yes, thank you so much, Brother Bob. Uh, we really need to know, dear friends, for whom did our Lord Jesus Christ shed His blood in order to reconcile people to God, to grant the forgiveness of sin so that they may indeed approach God through Him? Well, we need to allow the Bible to answer because we want to know the truth. And we have already determined that the truth, none other than the words of God, are written in the Holy Scriptures. All people should want to benefit from our Lord Jesus Christ being the way to God. So what does the Bible say for whom did our Lord Jesus Christ die and shed his blood on the cross? Let's read what the Apostle Paul teaches here in Acts 20, and the verse is 28, and the Bible states the following unto us. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. So according to the Bible, dear friends, not according to mere opinion or hearsay, it is the church of Christ that our Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood for. In the sight of the Lord our God, what is the church of Christ? Well, if we were to read Colossians 1.18, and we have read that citation many times in the past, there's mention of our Lord Jesus Christ being the head and the church his body. These two components from which our Lord Jesus Christ created in himself what is called as the one new man when he died on the cross. Therefore, for a person to be reconciled unto the Lord our God and be able to approach the Lord our God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And let's not forget, dear friends, it is only through our Lord Jesus Christ that people can approach the Lord our God. Therefore, a person must become a member of the Church of Christ, which is recognized as the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, dear viewers, we are here leading this Bible-based discussion together and learning from the Bible answers to these questions that we have and need the answers to. So what has the Bible taught us? Christ is the only way to God. What truth does the Bible also teach? Christ is the propitiation or the atoning sacrifice for our sins. That is, he was the sacrifice that God used that we may obtain the forgiveness of sins and be brought back into a right relationship with him. So, dear friends, who are those that the Bible teaches are they whom the Lord Jesus Christ died and shed his blood for? As Brother Donald just read, that is the Church of Christ. So if we want to be on the way back to God, if we want to get to God, we have to go through Christ in his body, in his church, that he died and shed his blood for, and that is the Church of Christ. And that's right, Brother Bob. And uh, Brother Donald mentioned before, he, he cited from Ephesians 2.15, that's the one new man, Christ being the head, the church being the body, but some might be wondering, what's the relevance? How important is it to be part of that one new man when it comes to attaining salvation and being reconciled to our Lord God? Again, that one new man is taught in Ephesians 2.15. Now I want to share what's written in Ephesians chapter 2 as well. This time in verse 18, and listen to what the Apostle Paul explains. For through him... We both have access by one spirit to the Father. Therefore, it's through being part of that one new man or being in the body of Christ that was redeemed or purchased by the blood of Christ, the church of Christ. It is through that that not only we are reconciled to our Lord God, but Apostle Paul explained, we have access to the Father. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. No one can come to our Lord God except through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
But brothers, what, what, why, why are we so sure that there's no other way for anyone to come to God except through Christ, his shed blood, and being a part of the one new man, or the church of Christ? Why? And being able to have also access to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ as the only way. Well, there's a great blessing awaiting those who are members of the church of Christ. Well, what's, that, uh, what's that blessing? What do you mean, Brother Dexter? Well, this blessing, Brother Bob, is taught by the apostles, as recorded here in Ephesians. Chapter is 3 and the verse is 21. All who belong to the church of Christ, we should praise Him forever. And if we read that verse in the Living Bible, this is what it says. May He be given glory forever and ever through endless ages because of His master plan of salvation for the church through Jesus Christ. So what is the great blessing awaiting members of the Church of Christ? Well, the Church of Christ is God's master plan of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, those who join the Church of Christ, as written in the Bible, are joining up or uniting with our Lord Jesus Christ, who is on, the only way to our Lord God, as well as to life, and therefore to the promised salvation on Judgment Day. And dear friends, to praise God, which is the very reason why we exist and why God created us, that can only be done when one belongs to the Church of Christ, because it was the Church of Christ that was redeemed and justified and purchased through the blood of Christ. That's why as members of the Church of Christ, we are very devoted in worshiping our Lord God. But brothers, what if there are uh, viewers among us who, well, they, they don't want to join the Church of Christ. Maybe they would say, well, I believe in Jesus, they might say, or they, they, they may say, I've, I have accepted Him as the personal Savior, I accepted Him as Lord. But they don't want to accept the truth that one needs to join the body of Christ, attached therein, the body of Christ, the Church of Christ, so as to benefit from God sending Him into this world in the first place as the only way back to Him. Brother Bob, if I could interject, there truly may be those out there, including some of our dear friends who are viewing this episode, that do not really want to believe what the Bible teaches. But let us all remember, dear friends, you're here and you are also invited by the members of the church to search for answers from the Bible, directions and guidance when it comes to our life, and most especially when it comes to good direction and guidance that will lead us to salvation. So even if it's not what we want or not what we currently believe, we need to put ourselves, or in fact, we need to deny ourselves and follow what the Bible teaches. Let us remember our Lord Jesus Christ said earlier, if you have put your faith in him, do what he says. And we also have heard of the idiomatic expression, is it not? The truth will set us free. Well, the truth are the words of God written in the Bible. So if when it comes to our so-called devotion or service unto God, but yet it is not based on what the Bible teaches, if there are those who have been trying to insist or impress upon us that through faith alone, for example, or any church will do when it comes to attaining salvation, we have to reject those falsehoods, and we have to accept the truth that the Bible teaches. One needs to be in Christ, and those who are in Christ are members of His body, the Church of Christ. Because through the Church of Christ, our sins were forgiven through the redemptive powers of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and being the body of Christ on His second advent, this is what He's going to save. Brother Andrew, what would be the consequence if one just uh, re rebukes all of those uh, truths recorded in the scriptures that Brother Donald just summarized? What's the consequences if one just says, nah, never mind those Bible truths, I'm just going to do it my own way? It's important that you mention that, Brother Bob, because when it comes to the truth, which uh, like Brother Donald explained, according to the Bible is through our membership in the Church of Christ, the truth is that we can receive salvation. So that accepting the truth and obeying it brings a reward or a blessing, which is eternal life. 
So on the opposite end, not accepting that truth, not obeying what the Bible teaches, to be in the church of Christ, to, to get to our Lord God in order to be saved, if we don't accept that, then there's also a consequence that will also be given to those who don't accept it. You know, Brother Andrew, that's a, a very, very uh, pressing or telling statement. Uh, when it comes to the apostles, they have something to say concerning that. Let's read here in uh, 1 Corinthians, the chapter is 5, and the verses are 12 to 13, and the following is recorded. For I have no obligation to judge those who are outside the church of Christ. God is the one who would judge those who are outside the church. The scriptures command us, you must take away the evil person who is among you. Because of this, if one is not a member of the church of Christ, they are outside the church, the Bible says that they will be judged by God. Did we hear that, dear friends? Those who are outside the church of our Lord Jesus Christ will be judged by God. And as we learned earlier, that judgment or punishment is tragically to be cast into the lake of fire on the day of judgment. Therefore, it is absolutely critical that all people be united with our Lord Jesus Christ as the only way that leads to God by becoming a member of his body or his church. We need to, we need to accept this truth. We need to accept what the Bible teaches and not hold on to hearsays that cannot be found in the Holy Bible. Dear friends, we really don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But it's the Bible says, the truth shall set you free. That is John 8, 32. And we know also the, the truth sometimes is penetrating, you know. The truth can be hurtful, but we accept and believe the truth when we do so, we're always going to feel better. Why? Because it will bring blessings in our life. What does Christ command everyone to do in order for them to, to benefit from Christ been, having been sent by God into the world as the only way to the true God, the Father? Well, we can read from our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And his words are written in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 7, and we'll read verse 9 as well. And this is what he said. So Jesus spoke again. In very truth, I tell you, I am the door. Anyone who comes into the fold through me will be saved. Now, dear friends, we want to point out the one speaking in this verse is none other than the Savior himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also want to point out that what Christ is telling us here, he said, is the very truth. So we have every reason to believe this. First, it's our Lord Jesus Christ telling us. And secondly, it's the very truth that he's telling us. And what is this very truth when it comes to salvation? The Savior himself told us that he is the door. And as the door and the way, Christ mentioned that we must enter through him into the flock. Therefore, we need to be inside the flock. And that is what our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, is telling us. You know, just like any road or way, as our Lord Jesus Christ is, there is an entrance. There is an on-ramp to it. And our Lord Jesus Christ gave the commandment that in order for us to be saved, we must enter or be inside that flock. Yes, Brother Andrew, and it's very important for us to know which is this fold or flock that is being referred to here. We read this earlier in our discussion. Allow me to read it once again. What is written in the Bible here in Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. What is that fold or flock? The fold or flock is none other than the church of Christ. Truly, as our Lord Jesus Christ mentioned earlier, what was read by Brother Andrew, he's telling the truth. And it is written in the Bible, the truth. 
For a person to come to our Lord God, he needs to go through our Lord Jesus Christ. And once a person enters or goes through our Lord Jesus Christ, he will become a member of the fold or flock, which is none other than the church. He will be a member of the church of Christ. This is the command of the Savior himself, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Christ gave this command so that we could be united with him and be with him. And yes, brothers, if I can also mention, because we read earlier in, a, in the Apostle John's statement, 1 John 5, 11 to 13, he who has the Son has life. Well, therefore, those who obey the command of our Lord Jesus Christ to enter the flock or the church of Christ, they will be united with him because the church is the body of Christ and Christ is the head of it. This is the biblical truth. And those who believe, accept, and obey it, as our Lord Jesus Christ said, will have eternal life because they'll be able to come to the Father. But brothers, what if our viewers would want uh, to ask, well, what, what does it mean that those who enter the church of Christ will be safe? Safe from what? Well, Brother Bob, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior himself, answers this. And this is what he says as recorded here in the book of John. The chapter is 10 and the verse is 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Dear friends, those who enter into our Lord Jesus Christ, the equivalent of entering the church of Christ, are certain of being saved. Being saved from what? From the punishment or consequences of sin. Being saved from the punishment of sin, they will have the true or eternal life promised by the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is another reason why Christ is the only way. By entering Him as a member of the Church of Christ, come Judgment Day, eternal life, dear friends, will be the reward. Brothers, seeing then that, uh, well, we are living in the last days, the end times, as proven by all the great tribulations that we're currently facing. Well, what does Christ urgently instruct everyone to do? We can read that from Christ here in the book of Luke, chapter 13. The verses are 23 up to verse 24. Someone asked him, Sir, will just a few people be saved? Jesus answered them, Do your best to go in through the narrow door, because many people will surely try to go in, but will not be able. You know, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, not only is it a crucial instruction for us to enter the church of Christ, but it's also an urgent one. Because according to our Lord Jesus Christ, we must do our best to enter because there will be many who will try, but they will not be able to. That's why we'd like to call the uh, attention of our dear viewers who are not yet members of the Church of Christ. May nothing hinder us from following the instruction given by the Savior himself that the only way for us to get to God and the only way for us to be saved is by entering into that flock or into the church of Christ to receive eternal life. Dear friends, we face at these times uh, many unusual experiences in, these, in, in life. Sometimes we don't know what to do. We, we, we may not know how to confront these new kinds of challenges. We want answers. We need help. That's why we invite you. We invite you to continue joining with us in this program and find Bible-based answers to the many problems and the troubles and the questions that we may be facing in this time of, of human history. The Word of God is the help we need. The Word of God is the solution to our troubles. It will lead us in the truth we need in our life Find the strength that comes from God and His salvation on the upcoming Day of Judgment. We as well invite you to 
search for a local congregation of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, Church of Christ, that is near to you, so you can join with us in our worship services and regular Bible studies, and you can continue to learn more about the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Church of Christ, at any of our official websites like incmedia.org. There you may also find a directory of the local congregations of the church and find the one that's nearest to you.